I need to let that warm up for just a little bit. Well, howdy do and good evening to you. No. Well, howdy do and good evening to you. No. I need to come up with a new intro. Like I need to, a solid intro that I feel good about. This is fucking hard. Like, why is the intro the hardest part of these goddamn videos? Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Clover's Corner. It is September 21st at 9.05 p.m. And I've just actually... And I've just come back from my first session with the gender... Nope. And I first... Can I speak English at some point tonight? That'd be useful. Thank you. As some of you may know, I recently reached out to a local gender counselor who also handles mood disorders to help me deal with my depression on top of the transition. Tonight, I have my first session with her. It's about 45 minutes, uh, I think maybe an hour-ish, eh, somewhere around there. Uh, I think it went well. It was mostly, I filled out a questionnaire, family history, insurance, that sort of thing. Um, mostly it was her asking questions to get a baseline, kind of, uh, get a feel for where I'm at, where we're supposed to go. She, uh, gave me some homework that I'm supposed to do, uh, an introduction to cognitive therapy. So got that, uh, to, to fill out. Uh, I got to bring that with me next time. I'm going to get a, a therapy binder together. I'm just going to grab one of my old D&D &D binders, slap some uh, leaf loose paper in there and call it good because I'm a cheap bitch. I'm definitely trying to be more open and honest and forthcoming about things than I might normally be. Obviously, she can't do her job if I'm not working with her. Um, that's what she's there to do is to work with me. So, so I'm definitely trying to make sure that I'm uh, open with her and that I'm telling her everything. So uh, I answered some questions. I don't normally talk about, uh, and I kind of wanted to uh, go into that here tonight. You know, a little, a little extra background on my transition and my mental state and where I'm at in my life that I didn't uh, think to cover in my last video. But that's better. Sorry about the abrupt angle change. The camera was way too high before, so looking into it to talk to you was way too difficult. Because I didn't get a crook in my neck. So why don't we all come close for story time with Aunt Clover, and I'm going to tell you about my close encounter with, I guess, sexual assault? I don't know. Uh, I don't really know what to call it, honestly. So as some of you may know, I am a furry, and I went to my first furry convention back in 2008. Uh, Morphicon 08, actually. I went there with an ex-friend of mine, uh, and also another furry who will remain nameless to protect the not innocent. Mostly because I don't know what he's doing these days and I don't want to have to deal with him. So my friend and myself and this other furry, we will call him AFZ, were sharing a room at Morphicon 08 to split the cost of the hotel room three ways. And... At first, this arrangement, so you got to understand that AFZ and I knew each other for about a year, maybe a little less than a year. Uh, you know, we'd met, we'd met online, we were talking back and forth for a while. You know, things were a little flirtatious, but it kind of gave me a weird, creepy vibe, so I you know, cut that off, or, or tried to anyway. You know, he, uh, he was still often inappropriate with his friendship and uh even after i sat him down and said look you know i'm not interested you know i may be poly but i've got a, a boyfriend and a girlfriend already i'm i'm busy with what i'm doing like this isn't going to happen uh he was still weirdly over the line flirtatious about things so that that should have been my first red flag but no silly little me back in 2008 18 year old me decided that, hey, you know what? We needed an extra room, uh, an extra body for the room at Morphicon. Hey, I know him. He's been trying to find a roommate. Let's get this over with. So we're all rooming at Morphicon and <clears throat> things are pretty normal for the most part. Um, I actually don't see him a lot. 
honestly, because I didn't spend a whole lot in the room. I volunteered as a gopher that year uh, in order to get access to free food, because if you tell me you'll feed me, I will do anything you ask, anything. And I spent more time running around helping the staff out than I did sleeping or doing much of anything else. So the whole weekend that we're up here, uh, up to a certain point, and I'll, you'll see why when I get there, uh, AFZ and I shared a bed, and this ex-friend had the other bed to himself because he's kind of a homophobe and so insecure in his masculinity that he couldn't even be in bed with another man without feeling gay. So AFZ and I say, all right, fine, whatever. We're not even going to argue with this. We'll share this bed. You can have that bed. Everybody's happy. Or so I thought. Because you know what? I wasn't happy. And you know why? Because every night I spent sleeping in that bed next to AFZ, he was the handiest motherfucker that I have ever damn seen. I could not keep his hands off me. He was hands on my chest, hands on my tummy, hands trying to go down below the belt, and I'm spending all night grabbing those hands, pulling them off, and throwing him back on the other side of the bed. Now, stupid little 18-year-old me is thinking, oh, you know, whatever, he's just very handsy and asleep, you know, the spooning is just an accident, you know, oh, if, you know, I'll just mention it to him tomorrow when he wakes up and, and, you know, it'll be fine. And it wasn't fine, because things then escalated. So I brought my D&D books with me that year. I was working on a campaign based off of Valkyria Chronicles, uh, specifically Valkyria Chronicles 1, uh, mostly because I wanted to run an experiment and see if I could design an entire campaign setting in one weekend. You know, Based on an existing source material as it may be, that's still a lot of work. Um, side note, I succeeded, and then three years later, all the notes got destroyed, so I kind of sucked in on myself like somebody had opened up a black hole in my chest. And I had lost my D&D books. Now I'm freaking out. This is like $200 worth of brand new D&D books. It's the three core rule books. I believe I had the player's handbook too with me. Uh, and a couple other supplements like uh, the um, spell compendium and I believe the magic item compendium and some other, some other items. Um, some other odds and ends, dice, whatever. So I'm freaking out because I'm like, this is $200 worth of books and equipment that I, I sat down somewhere and now it's gone. So I'm running around. I'm, I'm backtracking my way through all the rooms, um, all the different convention rooms, and I'm not seeing anything. So I think to myself, you know what? Let's go back to the room. Maybe I left it in the room. Maybe I never brought it out with me because I didn't remember actually using it at all because I'd been gophering all day. So I think, okay, we'll go back to the room. We'll check it out, see if I can find the stuff. So I make the trek all the way back to the room. And I use my key card. I open the door, and I am immediately greeted by the sight of AFZ, his boyfriend, and two of their friends, and I use the term loosely i the fuck buddies i guess i don't know he he tried to explain it to me in detail later and i kind of ran away um having an orgy on my bed i shit you not so there's five seconds of silence i'm stunned they're stunned they're stuck in the middle staring at me i'm staring at them trying to process what i'm seeing and I just decide inside that after this, after everything, after all how handsy he was all weekend, I, I wasn't even, I wanted nothing to do with it. I wasn't going to think about it. I wasn't going to admit that I had seen it. I, so I just asked him, have you seen my D&D &D books? That diffused the tension a little bit. Uh, I remember his boyfriend started laughing and I uh, remember he, he was like, he walks in on an orgy and all he wants to know is where's his D&D &D books? Uh, you know, inside I'm thinking, why the fuck am I walking in on an orgy in the bed that I'm sleeping in? I don't remember consenting to this, and it's a good thing I fucking walked in on this, because I don't think you were going to tell me. But, uh, I just say, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I want. Have you, have you seen my D&D &D books? No? Okay, I'm out. And then they ask me, after everything else this weekend, if I want to join. And there was a brief moment, very, very brief moment, where I'm considering multiple homicide. <laughs> Thinking, you know what? Might be worth it. I can claim temporary insanity. Maybe 
get a few years and then probation. But uh, I squash that. And I just shake my head and go, no, thank you. No, thank you. And I GTFO'd as fast out of that room as was humanly possible. In fact, I think I broke several speed limits, which was good because I found out about six, eight months later, somewhere around there, that AFZ got arrested for, for child molestation and went to jail. So he obviously had no concern with people's boundaries. So yeah, that was Clover's close encounter with sexual assault, uh, molestation, unwanted sexual advances. I don't really know what to call it. It was gross. I felt gross. It's caused intimacy issues out the wazoo.